Hello class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson four of the nutrients unit lipids. Uh, this is officially crossing the halfway mark. So there are six lessons in this unit. Uh, this is lesson four, so we can do it. Um, essentially lipids is another fancy word for fats. So that's what we're gonna talk about is fats, how we process them in our body, uh, how they're structured in our body and how we often eat them, what some healthy types are, what some unhealthy types are, and how we know and why they always seem to advertise on chip bags or crackers that there is no trans fats in these particular products. So let's get into it and figure out why. So lipids are made from the same elements as carbohydrates. They include hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. It's just how they're arranged that is very, very different. And again, maybe I'd pause here and write down some of the things that are on this slide in my own words, um, and then listen to me as we keep going. So the atoms are arranged differently that lead to very different characteristics and functions. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the last lesson, uh, how atoms are arranged is the most important part that determines the function of a molecule. So the building blocks of lipids include two things, glycerol and fatty acids. Uh, so I have kind of added those as points one and two. Uh, it is a different word, triglyceride, which I will show you. Um, but these are very, very key in the formation of fats. We're going to then talk more in depth about fatty acids and talk about saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids and transverse cis fats. So that all involves fatty acids. You have a diagram, I believe this one, there we go, in your notes. Uh, you can see, let me just shift this over a bit for you. I think I can. There we go, on the fly. So you can see that this is a glycerol molecule here. It is very small, it's made of three carbons and three OH groups. Now, this is a triglyceride. So the glyceride comes from this part, so glycerol turns into glyceride, and then each of these are fatty acids. So this C uh, from here to the right is a fatty acid, and this is a fatty acid, and this is a fatty acid. So I would take the time on your diagram to specify that which each part what each part is so that entire thing is known as a tri triglyceride and it is the building block for fats and each of these attached to the o's are fatty acids so we're going to talk more in depth about how the changes in these fatty acids can determine the healthiness or unhealthiness of a particular fat um, generally fat is not good but uh, there are better fats than others, if that makes sense. Let's continue. So, fatty acids. I'll slide this back over. There we go. Awesome. So, fatty acids. Uh, saturated fatty acids contain no double bonds uh, in the fatty acid chain. And you can see this in this diagram. So, I'm going to skip forward and move back uh, as well. So, sorry, just hang on. So let's skip forward. You can see that in this chain, there is only single lines between the C's, while in this one, there is double line in between these C's. So saturated contains no double bonds, while unsaturated contains double bonds. Saturated fatty acids contain no double bonds. Sources are primarily uh, animal fats like meat, butter, cream, and cheese. Uh, the effects on the body uh, are the worst for this type of saturated fatty acid. Uh, it increases the likelihood of developing cardiovascular diseases. And this is because, because they are all straight, they are all single bonds, these fatty acids can stack on top of each other very, very easily and clog up arteries. Uh, it's all about stackability. So saturated fatty acids are bad. Okay. Uh, unsaturated fatty acids have one double bond in the fatty acid chain, so that would be this one down here. You can see how it bends a little bit. Um, it doesn't always do that, but that bend is good. 
So they have one double bond in unsaturated fatty acids or more. Uh, these are primarily uh, good fats like in seeds and nuts, salmon and tuna like fish. Um, these are good oils. These are good fats for you, not the meat fats or the, the, the lard and the butter and the milk and all that stuff. Uh, polyunsaturated fats have more than one double bond. Uh, so as they get more and more double bonds, they become more and more unsaturated. Uh, the reason that we call them unsaturated is because they're not full of hydrogens. So you can see again, saturated fatty acids have hydrogens off of every single carbon. Um, there's no extra space. Well, as unsaturated fatty acids have this double bond and they are missing a few hydrogens. You can't fill it in because of this double bond. So saturated fatty acids are very bad and some unsaturated fats are also bad, but we need to get into that. So we've got uh, through point three here, um, saturated versus uh, unsaturated fatty acids. When we talk about trans versus cis fats, uh, we're talking about uh, unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, so trans fats are made during the hydrogenation process. So you've probably heard of um, hydrogenated margarine. Uh, we essentially add hydrogens to make it uh, the unsaturated fatty acid to make it solid. So fatty acids, when they have double bonds, they become all bendy. And if they're bendy in a bunch of different ways, you can't stack them on top of one another because of their bends. So that makes them liquid at a room temperature. When we hydrogenate fats, we make them more flat. And when they're flat, as I mentioned before, you can stack on top of one another. So trans fats are very easy to stack because they are also flat. So saturated fats are flat, but so are trans fats. Uh, that's why uh, all the chips, they say no trans fats because they are very bad for heart disease and for cancer. They like to clog arteries because they're easy to stick together. Cis fats are found in unsat are naturally found and they are considered the good fats. So you can see the difference between the trans configuration on the right where the uh, molecules are completely straight and the cis configuration where the molecule is bent. Bent is good, that is less stackable and less likely to harm your arteries, while trans fats are bad because they're flat and they're more stackable, more likely to harm your arteries. So I hope I was able to give you a good idea of the differences between the two uh, and what's important to remember and what's not important to remember about fatty acids. Essentially, we look at a triglyceride and we look at its fatty acids that come off of it. Are they saturated or are they unsaturated? Saturated is bad, and if they're unsaturated, we need to take it another step further. If they are trans fats, that is also not good, but if they are cis fats, then it is a good type of fat. Uh, that is the bent type. The reason that it's good is because it's bent. It is less likely to stack up and clog your arteries. Those are key details about what makes cis and trans fats good or bad for you. So some functions of fats or lipids. Energy reserves. Fats contain twice the energy compared to carbohydrates. So we stack up the fats in our body and then we can use them uh, for energy. It is a very slow use. It takes a long time to get that energy out of the fat. Um, that's why we always use up our carbohydrates first. Uh, fat acts as protection, as a cushion uh, for a variety of organs. Uh, if you get hit in the stomach um, and you have more fat, it is more protection. Uh, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Uh, it helps with insulation to maintain a constant body temperature and lipids are uh, part of the cell structure. They are a major component of all the cell walls in your body. They allow certain things through and don't allow others. Uh, lipids are the main component in cell walls in your body. You'll learn more about that um, in university. It's very, very cool the way that they can make a barrier. What I'd like you to do now is complete the questions about fatty acids below. A lot of it is in, uh, has to do with omega fatty acids and um, you know fish and where we get those from. If you have any questions, again, please let me know. This was lesson four. Uh, move on to lesson five next time, and we're almost at the end of the very first unit, uh, all done by video. If you guys have any questions, please let me know, and thanks again for watching.